because we're all mortal. Uh, then there's people that, you know, they enjoy health care. Their, 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 their lives are made better because they are well more often, because they make decent money and they can afford it. And then there are people who are very, very wealthy who probably are going to be able to live a lot longer because they can actually afford some really, really top-of-the-line expensive stuff because they're really, really rich. So what do you have here? Again, with any segment of the population, you have a bell curve. And they, they, the left can't stand it. They want all of the results to be equal. And it really, if you want, if you want to be honest about it, it, is, uh, it comes because our society is, is no longer content. It, it, it no longer content. It's so deep. I no longer content to have faith in anything, really, if you want my honest opinion about it. It's all about materialism, and and people are. I think, I think some of this again is, people are just absolutely terrified to die. <sighs> anyway, um, welcome, 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 welcome back. Happy Friday to you. Eight seven zero two seven five nine seven nine nine. Now we were just talking during the break, and I've just got so much to get to today. It's it's kind of frustrating, but. I think these two topics go together. The fact that, you know, it's up on Drudge, and I haven't really talked about this before, the fact that Duck Dynasty star Phil Robertson is revealing that, you know, they're cutting out, when he says, in Jesus' name, at the prayer, he cuts it out. They, or the, they cut it out back in Hollywood. Now, they sometimes they leave it in, but in the first couple seasons, they were totally cutting out. As a matter of fact, in the first season, uh, they were inserting bleeps and beeps where there were no cuss words. There was no profanity being used, and yet they were putting it in there, I guess, because they thought it was going to be more entertaining that way. But that's, uh, I think, I, th- I don't know if they went back and re-edited that as well, because I've seen episodes from the first season, and I don't, I don't really hear that anymore. Uh, the family obviously complained, and uh, now it's kind of a crapshoot. Some In the new seasons, they, they, they put, you can hear him say Jesus' name, but in other episodes you can't. Uh, so it's it's almost like I don't know if they did some sort of bargain, but it just it just really or earlier earlier when we were talking about health care, okay, I I kind of I kind of opened up a little bit more than I I wanted to when I said that people fear death, and I I kind of wanted to explore that just a little bit more because this is just me talking. This is just my personal opinion, and. Obviously, nobody wants to die, right? That's very, very clear. Nobody wants to die. It is something that I'm sure many people, uh, you know, there are some people that are more terrified of public speaking than they are of death. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld used to have a joke, and he basically deduced that that meant if you were at an event, if you were at a funeral, you would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy because you're so scared of public speaking. But anyway, there are people, obviously people are afraid of dying. That is that that is human nature. We do have a self-preservation instinct. There's no question. But when I look back, and again, this is just me talking. When I look back at the Declaration of Independence, and I read that we separated from the tyrant King George based on the idea that the people living in America recognized as a self-evident truth that we as men and women were endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that we as a country, as a nation, we recognized that the supremacy when, uh, of our of uh, of us of the people, not just a nation, but of us is far beyond a nation. That our rights don't come from a nation; they come from God. Essentially, ceding any sort because all nations or most nations throughout history they come to, they come at it as saying we are the supreme power. You answer to us. You answer to the state. You answer to the power. That's what communism is. That's what Islamofascism is. That's you. Are, but but basically, by empowering the individual, by uh, based on a concept around individual judgment, you're saying no. It's a self-evident truth that we are endowed by our Creator. You are starting our nation by acknowledging that 
our nation is not the supreme and final say of anything. That's what you're doing. That's what the document is communicating. That's what sets it apart from uh, other civilizations in other countries. And so I want you to think and try to think objectively with me just for a second on this issue. Do you think that a country filled with atheists would pen that document, the Declaration of Independence? The answer is no. I hate to be uh, absolute about it, because I know people don't like absolutes. There is People say there is no real truth. But on this issue, I think we could all agree. I think even atheists would agree, if they were honest with themselves, that if the people who were there uh, in Philadelphia trying to pen and, and sign, and, and they were nervous about the Declaration of Independence, that if they were atheists doing that, that they wouldn't have recognized a higher power. Okay, we can agree on that. So... The opposite of it is the men had to be of some uh, faith. In the, I, I know they were of, of great faith, but I'm playing devil's advocate of at least some faith, of at least some guidance, of at least some reliance on divine providence, as is written in many of our uh, founding fathers' writings. Let me ask you something else. Would you sign that document knowing what would happen if you lost? If you didn't have at least some confidence and faith in a higher power that he was going to take care of you if you did get drawn and quartered, if you did get hung? Would you at least think that in order to put your life on the line in the way that those men did, against insurmountable odds, that they actually had to have some sort of faith. So, take, take what I just said and, and put it on one side, and now let's, let's fast forward, and let's fast forward to where we are today, in our country today. We have people who dismiss the uh, intellectual idea that it's self-evident that we're endowed by our Creator. We have people that dismiss this. We have people that that hold it in contempt. We have people that don't like that concept, and they want to give the government power. They, in my opinion, just based on wanting to invent new unalienable rights, because that's what that's what they're doing. They believe health care is a new unalienable right, which we know it's not. So therefore, they are unseating, in my opinion. If you get down to the actual argument, I think they're unseating the what we talked about earlier, which was essentially starting a nation recognizing that we are not the supreme. Um, we don't have the supreme say. We don't have the last word. So... My point is, I think you can make an argument today, and I don't think this is a stretch, to say as a whole, as a collective, our ancestors in the 18th century, when they were signing the Declaration of Independence, when they were fighting the most well-trained, heavily armored military at that time in the world, when Ben Franklin said, we must hang together or surely we will hang separately. I think those men, collectively, not just those men, but the people of the nation, I think they had more faith, I think they had more of a belief in a higher power than we do today. Ask yourself the question, do you think we could sign and ratify the Declaration of Independence today? As a nation, the answer is no. We couldn't. So it's no, now, I guess my, what I would extrapolate from that is, you look at our problems today, is there a direct correlation? I would say so, but certainly there's an indirect correlation. Certainly there is. Let me ask you something. 
And I really think it comes down to a greater fear of death. Uh, We have a greater dependency on those who would say, oh, we can take care of you. Make no mistake about it, our ancestors, they traded, what did they trade? They traded their security, the security of the British Empire and the British military force, again, the greatest on the world at that time. They traded security for liberty, and they risked their lives to do it. Today, what are we doing? We do the complete opposite, and I think it's because we have a lack of faith. I'm going to say it. This is just me talking. No one else, just me. I think it's because we have a lack of faith that we are so willing to trade our liberty for more security. Because I, I don't think we're as confident of a nation. I don't think we know what our principles are. I don't think we know what right and wrong is. I don't think because we're not, definitely not willing to stand for it, so I don't really think we know it. If we really knew it, I think we would have more people standing for it. More people willing to risk not necessarily their lives, but certainly their fortunes, certainly their honor, certainly their reputation. And if their lives, if it were to come to that, yeah, their lives too. Take of it with health care. I think the same thing goes. Why is health care right? Oh, yeah, it could be about the wealth inequality. It could be about that. Or it could be that we've gotten so far away from self-reliance and we're so terrified of what will happen if we actually take a risk and put faith in something higher than ourselves. Oh, my gosh, I'm terrified of the prospect of dying. That may be a stretch to you, but to me, I'm just telling you, this is just me talking. It is not a stretch to me. To me, the two are at least indirectly linked as a whole. All of our problems. Isn't it incredible that when you look at something as complex as the National Security Agency spying on us and people willing and ready to accept it. Isn't it incredible that you can reduce that down to a moral rot and decay of this country? Isn't it incredible that when we say that we have $17 trillion in debt, that we have no intention of paying back, that you can reduce that down to a moral rot and a disregard for future generations of Americans? Isn't it Incredible, and this is not so much, that you can take an issue like abortion and reduce it down to an absolute moral decay when we can't identify genocide for what it is and call genocide genocide over the last 40 years. Isn't it strange that a good Christian family in West Monroe, Louisiana, that built a business making duck calls, is now an American sensation, and Hollywood had to add profanity to the first season because they thought that was what was going to make it entertaining. Isn't that strange when that you can reduce that down to a moral decay of what we find pleasurable, what we find entertaining. Isn't it strange? You know, they they feel the need to edit out when a man concludes his prayer in Jesus' name. Sounds to me like, again, it all reduces down to us having us not having something that previous generations had was it gradual yes yes it was it was gradual did liberalism and i believe this lack of faith come from apathy yes but the apathy came from prosperity and the and and that's just what happens you know we can take this argument on faith and 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 actually bring it back down to our answer to us desert island and and move completely separate but move and go into where does liberalism come from 
And as if you've been listening to my show for a while, you know that we believe liberalism cannot exist without a society built on conservative principles first. Because or else you wouldn't generate any prosperity that way. If you don't give men and women the incentive to better themselves and allow them to be free and have voluntary cooperation among men, not forced, if you don't allow them to work and allow them to enjoy what they worked for, then there is no prosperity for the apathetic to exist because you're in a very, um, well, I would just say, you don't have enough resources, so people are, are more, it's more survival. More about survival than it is about relaxing. You know, that's how we built the country, right? It was about survival at first, and we bred and uh, we, we yielded prosperity. It's out of that that we're in our present situation. And now we have a government trying to protect its legitimacy by keeping all of the bad things that might wake America up from happening. All of the consequences that the American people, and maybe we're about to get it, maybe we're finally about to get the consequences, and we're going to do it in Obamacare, which will be a short enough time to where hopefully people will see, well, gosh, I voted for this. And it doesn't work. Just maybe. People ask me why I'm limited government. Well, this segment, in so many words, I guess that's why. Um, we got to go to break. Feel free, send me a text. Thanks for listening to me ramble. I feel better. It's ther- therapy to me. 8702759799 we'll be back